All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do a introductory combined loading example problem. And I'm gonna show you what combined loading is, which really means you just have more than one internal loading going on, and how to draw the representative volume element at a specific point. So we're gonna be given a structure, in this case, a cantilever beam. And I would like to find the state of stress at point A, which is one meter from the free end of the cantilever and 30 millimeters from the bottom of the cross section. And if I were to look at the cross section of this beam or this member, it would be rectangular. And here, if I looked at a cut at line A, if I look through this cut and if this cross section were that cut location and I'm looking like this, I would see point A on the right side of the cut, 30 millimeters from the bottom. And what we wanna do in this problem is calculate the state of stress at point A and draw a differential volume element or represent representative volume element that describes the state of stress at point A. So the first thing I need to do is draw a free body diagram. And then I'm gonna wanna calculate the internal loading at, at this cut here because that's where point A is. And I need to know what the internal loading is and apply a bunch of equations so I can convert those into actual stresses at point A. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut at A and take the right side of that cut. So here's my cut at A and the internal loads at this cut could be in 2D, I could have a normal force, a shear, a moment, and I could even have a torsion. And I've used a positive internal sign convention where moments cause compression at the top and the internal shears are positive upwards on the right. And the normal forces are away from the cut or assuming tension. And this is a pretty typical positive internal sign convention used. Again, it just depends on, on the book or the instructor or whoever is teaching you. And the next thing that we wanna do is apply the equilibrium equations and determine the internal loads. So here, let's see, let me get rid of the trivial ones because there are no external torques applied so my internal torque is going to be zero and now I'll sum forces in the vertical so my internal shear force is two kilonewtons I got a positive result for the shears therefore it is pointing upwards if I sum forces in the horizontal and that will tell me n is equal to four kilonewtons I got a positive result again so my internal normal force is going to the left or it is causing tension on the face and last but not least I will sum moments about the cut and this four kilonewtons I'm going to assume is applied right through the centroid. So there's going to be no moment arm associated with that. And my internal moment is equal to negative two kilonewton meters, which means it's opposite of the way I drew this moment here. So in actuality, it's two kilonewton meters going like this. All right, so if you've gotten up to here and determined the internal loading, you've done everything you've learned in statics. And what's crazy, right? It, what's just crazy about this problem is that it builds on everything you've done in statics. In statics, you would have stopped the problem right here. And now in mechanics of materials or strength of materials or whatever they want to call this class, it's all about you taking this internal loading, this moment, this normal force, this shear, and converting them into a stress acting at point A. And and that's what we're going to do next. You know, this is what we've been learning in mechanics and materials is, is taking one internal load at a time, convert it into a normal or a shear stress at a point on the structure so that ultimately we can design it or see if it fails. And the way I really like to do this is to just go one internal load at a time and determine the type of stress that it causes determine the magnitude of that stress and figure out its direction. And that's gonna depend on understanding the stress distribution or stress profile associated with each of these internal loads. And all of this is gonna help draw that representative volume element. So now we wanna calculate the stress at A associated with each internal load. So we're just gonna go one at a time. I'm gonna start with my normal force. And here, the normal force acting at the cut on point A causes a normal stress. So normal stress at A due to my normal force. And the way that I convert the internal normal force into a stress is just with this relationship, N divided by A, four kilonewtons divided by the cross-sectional area, which is 50 by 150. And assuming I calculated this correctly, this would be 0.0005333 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And this is the same thing as 0.000533 gigapascals, which is the same as 0.533 megapascals. All right, so don't mess up on units because that of all things 
is freaking homeless. So we have the type of stress due to the normal force. It's a normal stress, hey? Eh? And the magnitude of the stress is 0.533 megapascals. Now we want to know the direction. And if you understand how to draw the normal stress profile due to normal force, you know that here, if this line right here represents my cut face, my normal force was acting this way. This was this normal force of four kilonewtons pulling on the face. My normal stress profile, we based on our equations, the way that this thing was this derived, this n over a, was a uniform stress profile. And that means at point A, which right here on the surface of the cut, let this line right here represent the cut face. And point A right here is experiencing a normal stress of 0.533 megapascals due to my normal force. And now we're going to go to the next internal load. We'll say my shear force. And my shear force causes a shear stress. And this shear stress due to shear force at A is equal to, because this is transverse shear, VQ over IT. So if you recall, the internal shear force was two kilonewtons acting upwards on the face of that cut. So we have V, the internal shear. Now we need the geometric properties, the first moment of area, capital Q, the moment of inertia I, and T, which is the width where we want to calculate the shear stress. And if you recall, our cross section was just a rectangular cross section with a width of 50 millimeters and a height of 150 millimeters. And the geometric centroid is right in the middle which is 75 millimeters from the bottom which is also the location of our neutral axis so the moment of inertia is just 1 12th base times the height cube which is 50 millimeters times 150 millimeters cubed and this is 14.062 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And this is the moment of inertia about the of the entire cross section about the neutral axis. The next thing we want to calculate is the first moment of area. This is important to know where we want to calculate the shear stress. And we want to calculate the shear stress in this problem at point A, 30 millimeters from the bottom. And the first moment of area is equal to the sum of the area times y bar i prime. And this area is all the area of the cross section above or below where you want to calculate the shear stress. This y bar i prime is the distance to the centroid of that area from the neutral axis. We want to calculate the shear stress at A in this problem along this line right there. So we can take all the area above or all the area below. And I'm going to choose all the area below. So boom, here is this blue area is my A prime. And since there's only one, it would be A1 prime. The centroid of this area and the distance from the neutral axis to here, this distance, 60 millimeters. And so my first moment of area is this area, which is 30 times 50 times that distance, 60 millimeters, equal to 90,000 millimeters cube. And last but not least, the width of where we want to calculate the shear stress. We want to calculate the shear stress at A, the width of the cross section or all the material the cross section at A, TA, is equal to 50 millimeters. And now all I have to do is plug and chug. I will get the shear stress at A due to the shear force is equal to 0 0.000256 GPA, which is the same as 0 0.256 megapascals. So now we have the magnitude of the shear stress at A due to that internal shear force. We want to now understand the direction. And again, if I draw my cut face, so let's let this line represent my cut face. And I had a shear force acting upwards on the cut of V equal to two kilonewtons. And here is point A, which was 30 millimeters from the bottom. My neutral axis right in the middle, 75 millimeters from the bottom. And if you recall, if you understand shear stress due to transfer shear, you know that distribution is parabolic. At the ends, the stresses are zero. And my distribution is parabolic. And I have my maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis location. And the direction of that shear stress is parallel to the face, acting in the same direction as the shear 
here, boom. And really what this drawing means or what our calculation means is that at point A, the intensity of shear stress or the value of this point on the graph right here is 0.256 megapascals. Our magnitude is 0.256 megapascals at A going upwards. All right, and last but not least, my other internal load that I have here is a moment. And this moment causes at point A, a normal stress. And I'm gonna just go ahead and straight up calculate a magnitude. I'm not gonna worry about whether it's in tension or compression right now. And this is gonna be the moment at the cut that we found, the internal load, times the distance to point A from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. And this right here, in fact, we've already found I and A. And if I look at the face of the cut, here's my neutral axis and point A is here. And we knew the distance of this neutral axis is 75 millimeters. So Y A, this distance right here, Y A is the distance from the neutral axis to the point where you want to calculate stress. And be because it's below the neutral axis, technically Y A is negative 45 millimeters. But for us, that negative doesn't really matter because we're just calculating the magnitude anyway. And we already calculated the moment of inertia about the neutral axis in the shear stress calculation. So hey, we got the same number there. And I can go ahead and calculate my normal stress at A due to my moment. And the moment that we calculated in the internal loading calculations was two kilonewton meters. This would be two kilonewton meters. I'm gonna go ahead and convert this meter into millimeters. So one times this distance which is 45 millimeters divided by the moment of inertia. Technically, there's a negative there with absolute values and the magnitude of the normal stress at A due to my moment is equal to 0.0064 kilonewtons per millimeter squared, which is the same as a gigapascal. And this is the same as 6.40 megapascals. All right, so that's the magnitude of my stress there. And now what's left for me is to determine the orientation. And again, this is again alluding to your understanding of the stress profile associated with bending moment. And here, if this is my cut, and I know that my moment is acting on the cut like this. This is two kilonewton meters. At the neutral axis, y is equal to zero. So my, my normal stress at neutral axis is zero. But anything below, according to this arrow, is compression at the bottom and tension at the top. Here is point A, and the intensity of that normal stress at point A, this value right here for that arrow, the max would be 6.40 MPA, and this is causing compression at A.